PSD Hacking 101. I'm Raggable. And I'm Fox. And this is PSD Hacking 101, Episode 3, Revenge of the ISO. Yeah. Anyways, on today's show, we're going to be covering, by popular, overwhelming demand... 88 votes! Which is... 45%. <laughs> so what are we going to be covering? Uh, how to back up UMD, and how to play that backup off of your memory stick. I'm also going to show you just a little preview of how to run Windows on your PSP. Uh, it's a slideshow, by the way. Yeah, it's not really <laughs> usable, but it's just a kind of a neat concept. You can run Windows on your PSP. <laughs> First thing we're going to show you how to do is back up your UMD to the memory stick on your PSP. Uh, some legal concerns about this, though, as far as we know, um, is that we're not actually circumventing any kind of copy protection on the UMD. It's just a regular ISO format that's read like a regular CD. Um, but don't take anything we say for fact. Take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, the, we've seen this done on a major cable network show. And Tech TV. Yeah, they, they did it with the Xbox and the PS2. Yeah. yeah. So we should be able to fly under the radar. All right, so the program you're going to be using for this is called uh, UMD Dump Alpha, and like always, that will be linked on our show notes. So when you download it, if you don't know how to install it onto your PSP, refer back to our episode two, and it'll give you a rundown on how to do it. So what you're going to need to do after you get this on your this program on your PSP, put in your UMD, execute the program, and it's just going to show you just this little screen that says dumping. And then what you're going to want to do is... Go to sleep. Go to sleep, go to work. Do something that takes over like four hours because that's how long it's going to take, uh, given the UMD. <laughs> <laughs> and the files, and how oh, big it is, too. And the file size. The other thing you're going to need is you're going to need like a one gigabyte memory stick because most of these games are very large. The UMD itself can hold up to 1.8 gigabytes. Uh, when he ripped Wipeout, it came down to about 250 megabytes, and when we originally ripped Lumines, it was around 400 to 600 megabytes. Yeah. Uh, uh, another thing we want to point out, after you get the UMD ripped, there are ways of uh, compressing the image file by taking out the dummy file that's in there. Just, like with Lumines. Yeah, with Lumines, it had, a, it had a very large dummy file in there. And wh what that dummy file does is it, on the physical disk, it pushes the data to the outer edges so you get faster load times. Uh, but with Wipeout, it wasn't there, so it really didn't help. Yeah, Wipeout uh, didn't have a dummy file. <laughs> <laughs> so like Pox has said, there are methods for reducing the ISO image size. Uh, the two programs, well, two different methods you can use are the rip kits for the particular game that you're backing up and the UMD shrink program. Uh, we won't be linking to any of those on our home show, on our show notes on our homepage uh, due to Pox's overwhelming legal fears that he normally has. What can I say? They're big companies and I, I, I don't want to make them angry. You fear Nintendo? You fear Sony? Hey, man. I want to keep the show going. I don't want them to like shut down our website. That's true. We could just re rename it to PSB Hacking uh, 201, the next step. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah. So if they ever shut down our website, what you need to do is just add, go up incrementally in our domains. And then how many times we get sued or whatever, we just keep on going up. Yeah. We'll just keep on. Every time they shut down our website, we'll just go 101, 102. No, don't, don't. 201, 301, 401. Oh, That's yeah. how college classes work. Okay, so this is how you're going to go about running the loader. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take the UMD ISO that you've created and move it to your PC, and you can try some of the techniques for reducing the file size, or you can just flat out move it from the root directory into the directory called ISO that's created from the loader. And the particular loader that we're going to be using today is fast loader. Then you're going to want to select the ISO file. In this case, we've got the the UMD ISO file that was created with UMD dump, and then we also have a smaller version that was used uh, the wipeout rip kit for. It'll ask you to insert a UMD, and then it'll run.
So on Saturday morning, I noticed that they had Windows running on a PSP, and I thought, hey, I can do that too. So I spent all day Saturday figuring out how to run this box PC emulator on the PSP. And here's the footage of my trials and tribulations. It's a slideshow. Have fun. This is more of a proof of concept right now because it's gonna it's gonna be a while. I've been waiting on this thing to load for ten minutes and it's still loading. <laughs> this program uh, that was ported over to the PSP today, a uh, box. And what you do is you just make an ISO image of Windows 98. Then you have to make a virtual image and you got to copy them onto your memory stick and it's, it's 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 just a little interesting thing right now, proving that you can run Windows 98 on a PSP. Not very usable at the moment, very slow, but hopefully in the future with optimizations, you might be able to do something with it. Pox here, another progress update on the the loading of Windows 98 on the PSP, and it's been 15 minutes, and at this point in time, all we got is just a little square on the screen. <laughs> Pretty impressive, huh? Finally got to the startup screen here. Still loading though, not all the icons are on here yet. Alright, Pox, here again. Now it's a day later. Gave up on trying to run Windows 98 on the PSP. Finally got it to boot, but it was nearly impossible to use the mouse, which is just the directional pads and now I've switched back to Windows 95 which seems to be working okay. It's a 150 megabyte image and I got it to kind of play one of our, our video files. So this is pretty useless but a cool little uh, proof of concept and we'll give a full tutorial on this once it gets to be a more useful feature. Maybe we'll show how to use some DOS games on this or something. Anyways, this is just a quick update. Let you know you can run Windows 98 on your PSP. As far as this process goes, there are a lot of, there are lots of areas that can be improved. Um, as far as the actual ripping process, uh, we envision in the future uh, a client-side PC app uh, monitoring monitoring the USB drive that is the PSP, and then on the PSP, the UMD dumping program running the USB software connection in the background while it's ripping the UMD. And then on the PC side, it's monitoring the memory stick, copying it over, and then removing the copy data. So it's just basically a quick copy and cut, yeah, cut so and paste. Ho hopefully the developers will have a method of ripping the UMDs without having to have one gig memory stick, hopefully through the USB port, possibly through the Wi-Fi connection, maybe even through the infrared connection. That would be slow. Infrared's not that bad. It's like a couple megabytes a second now. Okay. It's, it's, not, it's <laughs> not that bad. It's just, you know, direct line of sight. You gotta, you know. And yeah, not that many people have IR things on their computer. No. Not unless you have a fancy laptop. Mine does. <laughs> um, also, uh, as far as the reducing the file size for the ISO, um, Hopefully somebody will come out with a way to encode and re-encode the AT3 files at a lower bit rate or a lower sampling, and then you can shave off quite a bit of megabytes there. Uh, re-encode the video files, should they ever figure out, figure out what format they are in, and um, texture replacement in the Watt files. All right, so that was episode three. Uh, give us a rundown on what we covered, Box. Well, we covered how to take your UMD games, play them on your PSP's memory stick, so you don't have to carry around a big old stack of UMDs. And the current news of uh, the x86 emulator for the PSP. And we're always looking for your comments. Please email us, post on the forums. And vote in our next poll. And this is Pox. And I'm Raggable. And this was PSP Hacking 103. We 101, Episode 3. PSP yeah. Hacking 101. <laughs> Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.